Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the future of the water and wastewater industry and the careers you didn't know about. I'm your host, Dave Kosminski, and again, we are on location for the Connecticut Waterworks Fall Conference over here at the AquaTurf. And we have a special guest that uh, just finished up a great program this afternoon. Okay, the uh, Vice President of, of Engineering uh, and, uh, for Aquarian Water. Is that close? It's close enough. Close enough. Anyway, but you're also the President of CWWA. Yes, I am. Fantastic. The, the, the second time around. Yeah, the second time around, yeah. <laughs> okay. Dan, t- so t- t- tell me about your day job. I know you and I go back a long time in the water industry, so tell me how yeah. you got into the water industry. So I spent, uh, interesting enough, started my career in this in, uh, doing super fun work up in New York, and then um, kept, I got myself was working for uh, AECOM, Metcalf and Eddie at the time, down in Connecticut doing... Um, really remediation work, and I really wanted to get into civil engineering. Uh-huh. And um, so I ended up getting a, a, an opportunity with Wesson and Samson. Spent about 17 years with Wesson and Samson doing okay. water, wastewater, and all kinds of things. So about 22 years in consulting and decided it was time. I wanted to invest myself into one thing. Okay. And I uh, had a great, great opportunity to go to Aquarian Water as a director of engineering at that time. And, okay. You know, that was 2014. Wow. And, and okay. And then all of a sudden, here we are, you know, nine plus years later, and uh, vice president of engineering and cover a bunch of other things, wastewater operations, mm-hmm. fleet facilities, and real estate. So wow. it's, a, it's, a, it's a busy day, usually. Plus, you've been involved in the Connecticut section of CWWA. How did you get involved there? Uh, it's a funny story with Betsy Gara. So I was at uh, 2015 at the State House talking with um, Margaret Miner and a few other folks uh, uh-huh. about some, some things. And after Betsy and I left, she's like, you need to join CWWA. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I said, put the hook right on you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's been great. I joined as a, what am I going to call it, director three, I think. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went director three, director two, skipped that right into um, president almost because yeah. Beth ended up leaving the industry. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, that first year was a little crazy because I never was vice president. Okay. So I didn't know, you know, kind of miss a lot of that. Threw you in the deep end of the pool. Yeah, it was, uh, that doesn't bother me as much. You know, fire hose, deep end of the pool, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, but it's been a great experience when, you know, lear- learning, you learn so much when you get in the middle of it all. Oh, yeah. Um, in terms of regulations, people, and things like that. And I'm also co-chair of the Water Planning Council Advisory Group and still um, co-chair of the Western WOOC. Yep. So. Yeah, uh, we meet every month on Zoom and, yeah. and, you know, the advisory group plus the Water Planning Council yeah. and, and so forth. So, yeah, I, you know, CWWA is great, uh, you know, from the, stamp, uh, the standpoint of policy and, and uh, uh, you know, regulations and so forth. You kind of really get a, a, a sense of uh, how the sausage is made, so to speak, if you would. Yeah, you do. I think one of the things, and I said it today at the conference, is what you're really trying to do is make sure that whatever comes out from a regulatory standpoint or a legislative point is equitable. Yeah. That it makes sense, there's science behind it, that it's not single point rate making or single point legislation. Yeah. Um, Like I said, a lot of times one, one legislator has an issue, so they propose a bill. Yeah. And that bill may be really appropriate for that particular situation, but right. it's not appropriate to bring through the entire industry, water or wastewater. Yeah, yeah. Um, so really trying to identify those situations. I mean, you think of like the Legionella issues that we've, we've come up around. Yeah. Um, you think about, again, even the lead and copper rules and how they're being enforced and, and all those things. Um, PFAS, you know, being, the ability to be in the middle of that and having conversations, I think, is important. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, and the thing is, is that, you know, the interaction between the other utilities and you kind of get to experience, you know, obviously, Aquarian, you're one of the uh, um, investor owns in the state, but, you know, you're, you're dealing with is- issues that, that face, you know, not only the investor owns, but the quasi publics and the, uh, the municipals. So you have to kind of take all of that, you know, uh, in, into consideration and make sure, you know, the legislation that's coming down the pipe is, is, you know, helps one, but doesn't hurt the other. And, you know, to go from there, but, uh, Betsy does a good job and, you know, getting that information out there. And both of you. Yeah. And I always think about it. We're representing everything from that small water system. Yeah. 26 customers right? yeah. privately held, mm-hmm. um, doing, trying to do it themselves because yeah. they can't afford it any other way up to, you know, MDC ourselves, Connecticut water, right? Right. It does have to, you know, what's the implication now we don't have as great a representation on the smaller side, right? but having been, <clears throat> I spent most of my time as a consultant working with small communities, kind right. of have a bent for that yep. and yep. Uh, really sort of just really tied to that to make sure that, you know, we're 
getting somebody on the phone if we can. We sure. Can talk about that. I mean, we own a bunch of small systems too. Right. No. So I, I know how painful it can be. Well, you know, I, I think you, you guys were required to take quite a few small systems over. How did that work out? Well, yeah. So we've had people where we've engaged them to, and then we've had, had uh, Department of Public Health or and or Pura mandate us to take systems. Um, we do the same thing. I mean, we believe in water quality, yep. right? It's the number one thing we do. So it's getting that system immediately um, in, so compliance. It's not chlorinated, in compliance with the regulations, right. making sure they have good water. And sometimes that investment is large. Sometimes it's small. Sometimes it's just good operations. And our operations team takes that on, you know, getting uh, SCADA in place so we can see what's going on. Any, right. any, any place we have chemicals, we have SCADA so we can see it. We can lock it out if there's an issue. Right. Um, our operators do a tremendous job mm -hmm. with all they have on their plates. Sure, sure. Now, your, your, your service area, what, what does that include, you know? So right now we're in 59 towns in Connecticut, oh, okay. which is wow. Yeah, that's what I always say. Wow. Um, so the bulk of the number of customers, if you will, is in Southwest Fairfield County, Greenwich, okay. Stanford, Darien, and then our Bridgeport system, which um, is really called the, our main system, but Correct. it's in, you know, and we don't have a reservoir in Bridgeport or a treatment plant. So right. it's kind of, it's, it's kind of the old Bridgeport hydraulic name. Wow. Um, but so you have, um, you know, Stratford, um, Shelton, that area, yeah. Bridgeport. And then we have systems in Mystic, yeah. in Stonington. We have systems in my own town, Marlboro. We, we acquired that system from the town. Okay. Um, and then Lebanon and East Hampton. And so yeah, you've got East Hampton now, now too. Right? Yes, yeah, up, up near stores in uh, Norwich. And we, yep. we have a, a variety of things around the state. Because I think Connecticut water has something in East Hampton too, don't they? Yeah, I, I think everybody does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we're also up in Simsbury, you know, North Canaan, Norfolk. Um, you know, we have right now, I think, 36 or 39 reservoirs because we, now we own Torrington. Uh -huh. um, Torrington Water is now part of Aquarian. Yeah. You know, we um, acquired uh, Valley Water in Plainville. Okay. So, you know, it's, uh, the footprint grows in a good way. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, now, you know, uh, in terms of numbers, how many customers basically is total now? Uh, about seven hundred fifty thousand. Somewhere between six ninety and seven hundred fifty thousand. And that number, obviously, when you look at census data, you're trying to do, uh, you know, the, what's the per capita per home? Oh yeah. Right. So oh, we, yeah. those numbers are variable. Yeah. But they're yeah. somewhere in that range. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Get that at point. Well, I can remember when I first got involved in the section. You know. Uh, you know, going down to to Lindley Street. <laughs> yeah. You know, still there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I know. I got involved with the. Um, the cross connection, I, you know, yeah, Bob Starkey, I don't know if you remember that name. No, I don't. Uh, he was one of the original uh, uh, guys in the, in the cross connection field, but uh, unbelievable. And of course, you know, uh, you know, obviously, uh, John Hurley, he has been retired now. Yeah. He's been gone a couple of years now, right? Yeah, John's been gone a couple of years. Yesher Larson took over for him. Yep. Yesher's done a tremendous job. Um, continuing that legacy of caring about water quality every yeah. day. Yeah. Ryan, he does a great job. And, you know, there's a lot of uh, nuances in the regulations. If sure. you don't have um, a, I mean, having a team just dedicated to water quality right. and testing, that's all they do. So when yeah. there's a question come up, you know, that's not sitting in my lap trying to under go back and read a regulation. But right. Having right. that specialty really does help. I know John and I uh, spent, you know, Many a year, you know, going to the uh, the fly-ins down in D.C. That yeah. was a, that was always a informative an experience. We had a lot of fun, uh, but you know, you know, you know what's coming down nationally, and as far as in relation to, you know, we always had the the talking points that what was you know facing us as issues here in, in, yeah. in Connecticut. But uh, yeah, uh, John was very passionate about water quality. And, um, you know, he was national director for quite a few years. Yeah, he was. So yeah. uh, anyway. So, I mean, how many years have, have you got now with uh, with Aquaria? It's a little more than nine. nine. It's hard uh, to believe it's been oh, You're still nine. on a honeymoon. I know. It's, yeah, still. Well, I'll be young in the industry forever. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, you it, know, but I think uh, I enjoy investing my time and uh, I was talking about today when I was speaking about the need to help each other. Yeah. Right. And I think as, this time more than anything, as the industry goes from people with 45 years experience to people with five years experience right, right. Um, with the regulations changes and all that. Right. Um, we need each other. Oh. You know, try, finding <laughs> solutions. I mean, if I figured something out that can help you um, because I happen to have more resources. Yeah. You know, don't, I, don't. which I think was a, we had a great turnout today. Absolutely. And there was definitely a lot of um, 
of that going on. So yeah, it, right. it makes me really happy to see that. Well, again, why reinvent the wheel if you don't have to? Yeah, and there's yeah. a lot of different wheels out there right now. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> and they're all turning. They're all turning fast. <laughs> they're all they're all turning. Yeah. You know, I, again, one of the premises of me, you know, launching this podcast, obviously, is is to. You know, try to engage high school students, you know, seniors and college freshmen in, in to consider careers um, in, in the water industry. As you know, you know, um, help is getting hard to find. You know? It is. Um, our organization, uh, Jeff Ulrich, who's our vice president of operations, yep. and myself both use interns. Mm -hmm. um, or I'm a firm believer of interns. I've used interns my entire career. Mm -hmm. I believe there's a lot of value there. Um, we, on the operations side, we bring a lot of interns in kind of do it, decide whether it's a good fit for them and us. Right, right. In that process, they get to get their license. Sure. Right, because they're in the plants. Sure. And then, so we've, I think, hired your 13 or 15 interns, interns and who are now operators for us. Right. Right, so it's been a great succession plan. plan where that's, that's worth and, the investment. And, yeah, and hopefully we'll be able to get some of that grant that's out there. That's, yes, that's well, I'm, I'm, I'm working on that too. I'm sure you, know, you are. You know, as far as that goes, but you know, I mean, you know, uh, I mean, MDC, I mean, they put out an ad for, for an operator. They didn't get any applications. My God. Yeah. It was, it was, so yeah. we were trying to be like a baseball team where you have your, you know, your minor league team. Yeah. Right. And then you kind of work with them, build them up. And again, I think it's like every, every company, it's, there's a good fit and a bad fit. Yeah. But if, even if you bring people in, help them get licensing and they go somewhere else. The industry is in a better place. Oh, sure. I mean, obviously that's not what our preference is. Yeah, but, yeah. But yeah. I mean, you are helping the industry as a whole, which we, we all need to do that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, the point is, is that, you know, if you were to, you know, uh, uh, again, give advice to a high school students or college freshmen, what would you say? It's funny. Like when I was in high school, I remember this. I love science and I love math. So yeah. I went into engineering because I didn't want to write anything. As you know, all we do is write. Yeah. But I think you know, do something that you love. Yeah. Um, that, you know, you're passionate about and that interests you. But you know, the water industry, wastewater industry combined, um, are about human health. It's, you know, and I think when you think about trying to help people, trying to do something that has value yeah. in, in in our lives and in the world. Yeah. It's definitely there. So oh, if you absolutely. have an environmental bent, you know, get in there. We have again, we every company has a water quality person a watershed person and we, we have foresters yeah, yeah so there's plenty of things in the water industry where people can really find a career yeah if no. they choose to you know that what i call is that yeah, that water wastewater umbrella there's a lot of occupations that fall under that yeah umbrella. we have uh, our SCADA systems yep. so we have people that do electricians we yeah. own electricians, mechanics. Sure, you got we your have, vehicle We have our people. fleet mechanics. Yeah. So you know, it's like weird. You think about that. Like, yeah, those jobs exist out in other places, but all the water companies and wastewater, most of them have some sort of fleet. Yeah. Plus, as you've well. got construction people, truck drivers, uh, yeah. equipment operators, yeah. and the whole nine yards. Yeah. You know, and that's one thing I tell you know all my students. Okay, from that standpoint, you know, it's an industry, and, and you know, don't get me wrong, going to college is fine, but not everybody is. Uh, cut out to go to college. I, I agree. Mean, the I, have, trades. I, I have five kids myself, and they're all, now they're all adults. Yeah, my youngest is in our last year of college. Thank goodness. You know, last payment. But one of my sons uh, works at a brewery, and um, he never put, we never went to college, but he's one of the smartest people I know. Yeah, well, and uh, he's running the floor. He works at uh, East Rock in New Haven. Okay, so yeah. If well, had their beer. He's the one who's making it for you. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Well, and that's the thing. You know, these these kids can get uh, you know a good viable o occupation, and you know they don't get strapped with fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars in student loans. Yeah. You know, you know, to get out and yeah. not know what they're going to do. Yeah, and the fascinating thing is he's doing. He's like a water treatment plant operator for all intents and purposes because he's doing pH adjustment. Sure. He's doing, uh, he's got a centrifuge. He's yep. got a, so it's kind of humorous. Like I said, you should be in, you should come over to the water side, but he just loves what he does. Well, that's, that's all. Okay. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's the thing, you know, whatever you do, you got to like what you do. Yeah. You know, from a standpoint, you know, you, you want to get up and go to work every day and it's, you, you want to go to work and enjoy what you do, not dread, you know, going into work. Yeah, you know, absolutely. As, as far as that goes. So fantastic. So, um, okay. Uh, so on, uh, on a personal side, you have five kids. So five kids. They're all um, older than 21 now. So okay. They're all adults. I have four grandkids. Nice. Yeah. It's okay. hard to believe. <laughs> so, wow. Unbelievable. My yeah. God. You're not that old to have five I'm kids. I'm 53. Is that so, right? Yeah. It was uh, my wife and I met in high school, so okay. we've been dating for a long time and then got married and had kids. And, there we go. And the rest know, is history. Now, being young and running around still is good. 
Well, it keeps us young. It, it, it does. He, he keeps us young. So, so uh, uh, on a personal side, what do you like to do for hobbies? So we um, we actually had bought an RV during uh, um, COVID, which we had thought about for a long time. So we go places, and we like to hike, to bike, okay, um, like to kayak. Yeah, yeah. You know, get myself out outside. Yeah. You know. Well, and, that's uh, good. You know. You know, I, I think one of my passions you know i i started the podcast about uh, a year and a half ago almost a year and three quarters and so forth but i'm retiring in january so i says you know i says i was thinking of uh, putting a mobile podcast studio together and traveling it putting it in an rv and just you know traveling across uh the united states and interview water operators and people that in sounds the, awesome in, in the water industry and just see yeah. the, what's happening you know i don't know so there's a young man brendan hall who grew up in marlboro where, yeah. I, where I live still today and um, he has a he did this kind of something similar, but he did it on the national parks. Oh, okay. So it's that be coming out. They're showing it at the church we go to in town, um, but it, it's going to be in the movie, movie theaters eventually. And it, it was all about interviewing people and the experiences they were having at the okay. parks, not the parks themselves. So nice. Yeah. Um, so we have a lot of people in our little towns between Portland, East Hampton, sure. Marlboro that are doing things and, and make it, making an impact in our world, which I think is great. So how, how long does it take you to get to work? Uh, it's about an hour. An hour? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but if I have to go to Massachusetts or New Hampshire, I'm, okay. I'm closer. You're halfway there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly so. Yeah. Uh, as you know, I have a musical background, so I have to ask musical questions here. It says, uh, okay, what, do you remember the first concert you went to? Uh, I've only been to a couple, so it was uh, Billy Joel. Oh, okay, in, in uh, Madison Square Garden? Um, uh, no, I think it was in Hartford. Oh, it was in Hartford. Okay. Yeah. The piano man. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you had, if you got stuck on a desert island, okay, uh, what food could you eat every day? Oh, now that I have all these restrictions. <laughs> right. Sure. Now you're on a diet. You look great, by the way. Yeah. I'm fantastic. So, um, my wife makes these, uh, turkey cutlets into breaded turkey the cutlets with no gluten and they're just amazing oh wow i could okay. eat those every day okay fantastic but before i would have said pizza or ice cream but now i can't eat those things so. well you know you know one of the 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 top three okay when i ask this question is is pizza sushi and and, and anything italian yeah i can't eat many of that so yeah yeah so which I, has been a real huge change but uh from a health perspective i feel great so well that's that's all yeah. that counts that's all that counts okay uh uh, musical out okay uh if you had uh, got stuck on a desert island what would be the f you know three or four albums that you would bring so to listen queen to? queen okay I love queen yeah um anytime it comes on the radio it makes me happy yeah um elton john and billy joel probably that group okay so this is what i kind of like grew up on myself on so nice nice fantastic all right dan dan lawrence is in the house dan thank you so much for Always a pleasure. Taking part of the Thanks, podcast, Steve. and I'll, I'll shoot you an email and uh, let you know when we get the post up and, and, and go from there. But if you got anybody down at uh, uh, Aquarian, either East Hampton or Portland or whatever, and want to have them come on the podcast, I tape it at the, at the music store in Portland. Oh, okay. I'll be happy to be great. Know, come on. And like yeah. I say, it's not a big time commitment, you know, 15, 20 minutes or whatever. Uh, yeah. And to go from there. So yeah. be all set. All right. Sounds great. Fantastic. All right, ladies and gentlemen. That concludes this episode of the Future of the Water and Waste of Water Industry and the careers you didn't know about. And Mr. Dan Lawrence from the Aquarion Water Company is in the house and uh, uh, sharing you his perspective on what his day job is like. So, again, uh, stay tuned and we'll catch you on the next episode. Thank you so much.